Welcome, everybody. This is a SIG Cloud Provider intro session. Uh, and today, we're going to uh, give you like an overview of what SIG Cloud Provider does. And we're going to be our lovely host for today. So my name is Fabio Raposelli. I work for VMware. I've been working on Kubernetes for the past, I don't know, four or five years, uh, working mostly in upstream. So you probably saw some, some of my PRs on vSphere. If you use vSphere, there's a pretty good chance that I wrote some of the code. And with me, there's Nick Turner from Amazon. You want to introduce yourself, Nick? Sure. Um, my name is Nick Turner. I work at AWS uh, on EKS. And um, before that, I worked at a couple startups in Seattle, and uh, where I was a user of Kubernetes. Um, and now I'm a cloud provider, I guess. <laughs> awesome. So. Uh, the agenda for today is we're gonna we just we want to make this as interactive as possible. So please feel free to like ask questions. As if you get any questions you want to ask us, just do it right away. Don't wait until the end. Uh, we have some slides that we're gonna go over. So we're gonna talk about you know some logistics first. We're gonna introduce the SIG. We're gonna go over one of the main projects that we have currently in the SIG, which is the cloud extraction and migration project. And at the very end, we're going to offer some topics for discussion. So if people have, you know, questions they haven't thought about, just look at the slide. We're going to give some, you know, food for thought there. Uh, but again, feel free to ask any questions anytime. Uh, we'll be walking around with a microphone to give you a, a chance to ask your question to the microphone. So please raise your hand. Let me know uh, if you have anything you want to ask us. Some rules of engagement. Please, you know, just be respectful. Be kind. We're here just to collaborate. No, you know, no hard feelings with anybody. So just, you know, just be kind. That's really the only thing to keep in mind right now. And this is the charter for SIG Cloud Provider. So if you've never been exposed to SIG Cloud Provider before, this is what SIG Cloud Provider is all about. So SIG Cloud Provider, I'm just going to read out the, the charter right now. SIG Cloud Provider's mission is to simplify, develop, and maintain cloud, provi cloud provider integrations as extensions or add-ons to Kubernetes clusters. So what does that mean? So it means that we have you know, some of the things in the Kubernetes ecosystem that we want to uh, make sure are you know, working in concert with everything else in happening in Kubernetes core. So ideally, what we want to do is we want to you know, be able to leverage cloud-specific components and services with Kubernetes. So if your cloud platform has some services that can be beneficial to Kubernetes. We want to make sure you have all the integration points, all the APIs you need to use them effectively. So we want to make sure that you, know, you have all the right abstractions, all the right APIs to do the lifecycle management of those resources. So think of it you know, as you know, a way to provision load balancers or you know, use your um, I don't know, encryption keys from your cloud provider. We want to make sure you have the right abstraction, the right APIs to use them. Uh, and last but not least, there's actually a very important part of the Cloud Provider is to ensure vendor neutrality in the project. Uh, there have been a lot of tensions before when all the effort with Cloud Providers was focused on Kubernetes core. Uh, you know, lots of tensions since you know, vendors have different agendas sometimes. Uh, and this, you know, the creation of Cloud Provider to ensure that there's vendor neutrality in the Kubernetes ecosystem itself. So, we want to have, make sure that we have a testing framework, a testing environment that is able to maintain that vendor neutrality across the board. So this is a very uh, big focus of Cycle Provider these days. So again, what is the SIG responsible for? Common interfaces. Uh, all the things that we do in Cycle Provider are meant to create this, you know, this base underlying interface for cloud providers to integrate with. We also work with other SIGs to you know, get to this goal. Uh, think of it as you know, a way to integrate, for example, with uh, SIG cluster lifecycle. SIG cluster lifecycle has projects around the lifecycle of clusters. So we work with them to make sure that all the interfaces are you know, working in concert together. So think of cluster API, for example. That's one a big you know, um, point of contact that we have with them. We want to make sure that you know, the Cloud Controller Manager, which is a, a you know, Kubernetes core component is you know, working and all the core controllers are managed. This is under the responsibility of the SIG. And we also uh, kind of 
we're also the umbrella SIG for all the projects that don't have, that are cloud provider specifics, and they don't have a specific SIG sponsoring them. So one big example that I could give you here is CSI. So CSI is the storage, the common storage interface. Uh, the CSI spec itself is sponsored by SIG storage. So SIG storage is looking after the, uh, the spec of CSI itself. But not of the specific cloud provider implementations of it. So uh, give an example, you know, the AWS CSI implementation is not under SIG storage because SIG storage doesn't want to have, you know, um, doesn't want to sponsor those efforts. So they are under SIG cloud provider right now. And right now the only uh, ex counter example I can give you is uh, Cluster API. So Cluster API has providers for specific uh, platforms, uh, AWS, vSphere, and others. And those are under SIG cluster lifecycle. So depending on the governance of the SIG itself, it can be either under that, or if not, it will be collected on a SIG cloud provider. And these are some of the sub-projects we currently have under SIG cloud providers. So there's, as you can see, there's a bunch of you know, providers listed there with uh, the name of the product itself. So this is a kind of an interesting distinction. So uh, you'll see that there's uh, some names here but you probably know that there are other cloud providers that offer Kubernetes integration, but they're not listed here. Why is that? So these are the providers that decided to upstream their work. So all these providers are listed under the SIG subproject list because they are part of the Kubernetes SIG um, GitHub org. So basically, they're under the CNCF umbrella. They're under the Kubernetes umbrella. They're not... Uh, tied to their own vendor, um, vendor GitHub org. They're basically just part of the upstream community. And if you're a, if you're a vendor, if you're a cloud provider, and you want to uh, move your code under that, please reach out to, uh, to us during one of the SIG cloud provider meetings. We'll be happy to accommodate. Uh, we actually had a few of those. Um, top of my mind would be uh, Alibaba that you know, recently uh, got um, moved under the Kubernetes SIG org. Uh, we also have other uh, providers that participate in the SIG, but they're not, uh, you know, comfortable to move those co the, their code for the cloud provider under the SIG because of other reasons. Um, so either way, just be engaged with us, even if you don't want to move your code under uh, under Kubernetes under cloud provider SIG. But it's important to have you on the same page with what we're doing uh, as part of the broader SIG. And now we're going to talk about the cloud provider section migration project, and I'm going to hand, hand it off to Nick. Yeah. <clears throat> so a little bit of background. Um, when Obviously, when Kubernetes began, all of the cloud provider-specific code was embedded in core. Um, and people quickly realized that this was uh, a little bit untenable. We had all these cloud provider SDKs um, directly imported into the project. And uh, that caused, started to cause significant code bloat as more and more providers added themselves in. Um, so we're currently in the pro process of removing that code from the Kubernetes core code base. But it's uh, a very long process. <laughs> um, so uh, we were working on it last year. We're continuing um, to work on it next year. And so some of the benefits to this it's going to be easier to support new providers because they don't have to actually go through the process to be merged in entry. Um, providers can release whenever they want. They don't have to follow the Kubernetes code releases. Um, and then I think the third, uh, the third benefit is just reduce bloat in core. Um, the, 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 the SDKs actually um, significantly bloat some of the binaries like kubelet. So, um, and you can take a look at the uh, removing entry providers kept for a little bit more information on that. Um, so one big piece of this extraction migration is the cloud controller manager. So as you might know, a lot of the loops in the cube controller manager right now have cloud provider specific code in them. Um, so part of this extraction is breaking those out into a separate binary, which would be the, the cloud controller manager. Um, and so there is actually a kep 
um, which is in the process. I think it's, I'm not sure, I don't think it's implementable yet, but uh, we're getting there, so we're trying to get there by the end of this year. Um, and basically, the process that we will follow, or the proposed process, is to, so right now, Cube Controller Manager has a, a leader election lock. So if you have multiple Cube Controller Managers running, only one of them is the leader and actually acting on anything. Um, but when you break a number of controllers out of that binary, and then you try to perform an upgrade, you can imagine that as a new node comes up with this broken out binary, those controllers that have been broken out, the cloud specific controllers, aren't gonna listen to the lock, right? They're just gonna try to do, they're just gonna start acting on whatever uh, resources they act on. Um, so the, the way around this is to introduce a new migration lock, um, which the broken out controllers will uh, sort of obey. So um, you can see here the uh, cube controller manager has two sets of controllers in it. It has the core controllers, which are continuing to watch the um, cube controller manager lock, and it has the broken out uh, cloud controller managers still within the same binary, um, and those guys are looking at the migration lock. And then the next step of that migration would be to actually move the cloud, uh, the cloud controllers over to the cloud controller manager um, binary. And so when a new node comes up with those controllers, they will be looking at the migration lock as well. So that allows the process to happen without any um, conflict there. Questions on that? If you have like, any questions, just raise your hand. I'm yeah. going to walk over and give you a microphone. Yes. So you said uh, CS. about right now is the documentation project so the idea is right now to get started with any cloud provider you have to go and find your documentation right you have to go search the internet for you know how do I start up you know my cluster or what how do I operate my cluster on you know vSphere or AWS or whatever else uh, whatever other providers so right now we're trying to get uh, in sync with sig docs to make sure we have you know the right set of, the right set of docs the right set of expectations for providers that are listed under a SIG cloud provider in terms of documentation and have that standardized. So, the, you know, the benefit of being part of that your org, be part of that, um, be part of SIG cloud provider as a sub project is to leverage those, you know, uh, synergies between all the various projects, right? And be part of the upstream community. But, you know, if you feel like you're, you know, you're, you're okay with having your own documentation, your own repo, your own issues, your own, you know, um, way of governance for your cloud provider, that's, that's absolutely fine. Uh, the, the kind of benefit you get from participating in a community is standardization, basically.
extraction work. Um, so 2019 encompassed beginning with began the migration uh, out of tree, and um, cloud providers were moved into the legacy cloud providers uh, repo and staging. Um, towards the end of 2019, we're still working on the strategy, uh, the migration strategy for Cloud Controller Manager. And then 2020 should uh, see the migration strategy become a little bit more battle-tested. And TBD when cloud providers actually make the cut over. Um, I th we'll see, hopefully 2020, but maybe 2021. Uh, anything else you want to add? I just want to add one thing. Um, if you've experienced the KK repo, uh, we built it in Tree, it was part of KCM. So now with the AWS cloud provider, we just import the legacy cloud provider into our external uh, binary. And because legacy is sort of under kind of a, I would say, soft code freeze, um, and it, ideally we're just trying to accept bug fixes there. So that's our incentive to get it out, to migrate that code out completely um, as soon as possible. So uh, maybe a little bit uh, an, uh, an opportunity for some discussion here. Um, what is a reasonable timeline to fully remove entry providers <laughs> is the first question. And uh, so also what is the state of existing cloud providers and their out of tree providers? If anybody wants to share or has any thoughts on that. I want to ask another question. I mean, how many of you are using out of tree providers? Either be
on uh, the code organization. So we talked about this uh, before. So how do, you, how do you discover, how do you find out, you know, what the providers are, the documentation, how do you actually get this thing, you know, off the ground? Um, so we previously had um, six specific, six, uh, cloud provider specific SIGs, uh, like SIG VMware, SIG AWS, SIG OpenStack, and so on. So some of, some of the people kind of like, you know, I'm running, you know, my cluster on VMware, so I just go to SIG VMware, get all my information that I, get, that I need for them. Uh, we're gonna like briefly touch on that after, but you know, all these SIGs are now folded into SIG Cloud Providers, so there's no longer a SIG VM or a SIG AWS meeting. We only have you know provider specific meetings for that. So I wonder if any of you, either as end users or you know integrators or uh, even vendors, uh, find this discoverability of information around how to run. Kubernetes on a specific cloud provider find it difficult, or it's hard to figure out, hard to understand, hard to Google even. Yes. process is successful. So we're going to try to help with that as much as possible, um, but that's what every cluster operator is going to have to go through. The other thing is even for managed Kubernetes, there are a couple of subtle places you're going to see changes. So as an example, PV type for uh, a GCEPD on CSI. 
And so the old, old one will work, but you will now see this new option and there will be a bunch of guidance about, you know, where possible, please use the new type, not the old type. If you're today, uh, you're watching this presentation, and tomorrow you want to get started, you know, contributing to this. Uh, first thing, first step, join the meetings. We have a bi-weekly meeting on Wednesday, right, Wednesday. Uh, and, you know, that is the best place to start. Uh, we do have, obviously, we have open issues, so people can just look at them. Uh, but more importantly is, like, to get on with what the, what the work stream is, right? Um, cloud destruction and migration, it's, it's a big topic right now. It's probably where we need the most help at this very moment. And it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a huge impact on Kubernetes as a whole. So it's actually a very interesting problem to solve. Also a very complex problem to solve. So there's a lot of work there that needs to be done. And there's also a separate meeting for that. Um, you know, besides the main C C Cloud provider meeting, there's also a, a cloud extraction and migration meeting specific for that. So that will be a very good you know, starting point if you want to contribute to, uh, to the work here. Uh, there's also a lot of work in the cloud providers themselves. So every single cloud provider has a lot of work to do. Uh, it can be on the CCM itself, it can be on CSI, it can be on any other provider. So if you care a lot about one specific uh, cloud provider or one specific part of a cloud provider, say storage on vSphere or storage in AWS or encryption provider, uh, there's a lot of work to be done there too. So plenty of work that needs to be done.